Vestiți pe Domnul Zărâmă, înaintea Lui și în această seară. Hai să începem cu cântarea 869. 869. Ea se potrivește bine. Ție scând Dumnezeul meu, ție scând Dumnezeul meu. Fa mai joc, da? Welcome to the house of the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. And then, because there's few people, let's sing a congregational song and then we will read the text. Heavenly Father, with thanksgiving, we come tonight before you and we want, Lord, that as we sing, we want to praise you because you are Lord, because you are good. We want to praise you for everything that you've given us, especially we want to thank you for Jesus Christ because he loved us and you have sent Jesus Christ as a sacrifice for our sins. Thank you that you have made us your children through Jesus' merits. Thank you for this time of prayer and for your word, and Lord, please bless your word. Thank you for your presence through the Holy Spirit, and I pray that you speak to us, you lead us through your Holy Spirit, and for all those who will who are here will praise you through um, praise and through the word, and please bless this gathering here. Please work in our hearts and our minds of everyone who's here to pay attention to your word, to listen. And please give us grace through your Holy Spirit to fulfill your word in our lives. For these things I prayed in Amen. Jesus' name, and we thank you. Amen. Let's be seated and sing another congregational song. Sunt străini și călători, n-am aici palate, dar în țara fără nor, ale mele sunt toate. Amen. 
If you want to stand with me and let's read a few verses from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your ad adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As an apostle and um, a witness of the life and suffering of Jesus, Apostle Peter encourages the elders of the church to a life that can be a good example for the ones who are younger in their faith, a life that is um, characterized by self-sacrifice and under submission to God, knowing that they will answer for everything and that the high priest, Jesus Christ, will give them a reward that is everlasting. Just as the elders and those who supervise are encouraged to submit themselves to Christ, so are the young people to be submitted to the elders, to be humble, to be, be watchful, and trust that God takes care of all of their problems. Encouragements that when they are considered, when they are considered, they lead to peace and sanctification. The advice for elders and the young people: we are all called to be clothed with humility in what we read. They live, they also have to live in harmony with each other. The encouragements from these verses are not only for the young people as a biological age, it addresses them, but not only them, but it addresses those who are young in their faith. And this can be very well applied to everyone else who is under the authority of um, elders in the church. The term youth should not be a stumbling block for anyone when it comes to submission because Jesus used this term when he addressed the disciples, he used the word children, even though some of them were older. The submission of a young man or the su submission of a person in Christ is something that is hard to digest because it is contrary to our human flesh that always wants to be first. And because of this, the Apostle encourages all, all of us to be clothed with humility. It is interesting if we see in the, if we look at these verses that if submission and humility are associated with living in, in holiness and being watchful and living in fellowship with other brothers and sisters, then we can affirm, and I don't think we would be wrong to affirm this, that be, not being submitted and being proud um, leads to strife and sin. David prays for God to protect him from pride so that he will not be guilty of great sins. Many times in the scripture we see submission as something that we have to pay attention to. Starting with the elders in Leviticus 19.32 or honoring those with white hair, especially those who are in the walk of faith in Proverbs 16.31. The Word of God asks for obedience, for value, for being submitted to it and to be to look up to those who lead us. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 and 13, I just want to say a few observations about submission. Submission always keeps peace where it is observed. 
either if we're talking about family, society, or church. At the same time, there is an order in the submission that God placed. The church always submits herself to Christ. The wife submits herself to her husband. The young person submits himself to the elders. The, the employee submits to his employer. There is no order that is reversed where there is no um, where there are no problems that come up with it. Pride comes before fall. There are many other verses that show us the consequences of pride and lack of submission. Another observation is that God has promises for those who are humble and accept submission. Just as God sh showed us in His Word, He gives grace to the humble. We read these in these few verses. Another promise is that His eyes are on the on the holy, uh, on the humble. Isaiah 57 tells us that God is on their side. The verses that we read from 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 teaches, teach us to throw all of our burdens to the Lord, and when He will find it the right time, He will answer us and lift us up. When He gives grace, He gives wisdom in how to act in any situation that we might be in and that we might be going through. So we should always stand strong and not give in to temptation. An example that I found for a, an unconditional submission is in Genesis 16, if you want to read it at home. It talks about Hagar when the angel of the Lord asks her to go back to her master and submit to her. And the Bible doesn't say that Hagar was not treated unrighteously, Sarah, but it, it tells us that Sarah was treating her badly, but the angel of the Lord still tells her to go back, and she received a blessing for obeying. Many times, at least, we declare so. We seek being like Christ, and we pray for this. So that is why I ask that we stand for prayer. I want to close with the verses from Hebrews 5 and Phil Philippians 2 and to take Jesus' words who even though he was the son of God he learned to be obedient and to be humble we as believers have to follow Christ's example and the teaching of the scripture about Jesus Jesus was Jesus humbled himself and then he was raised up by the Lord let's stand and to pray there's few of us here so I think all of us will have time to pray so let's ask for the Lord to help us obey his word in all these aspects thank you dear father for this night thank you they've strengthened us that we could come before you please lean your ear to our prayers pr receive our praise and our honor thank you that you want to teach us to um, meditate on your word and to apply it to our lives help each of us to make this a practice in our lives and I pray for all those who could not be here please um, touch their lives and resolve all their problems and I pray for this country Lord there are elections coming up Lord I ask that you stop the evil that started to destroy this country that calls evil good and good evil Lord please have mercy on us in Jesus name I pray Amen dear Heavenly Father thank you for this day thank you for your word this more th this evening help me be humble and trust in your word in Jesus name I pray amen may you be praised Lord because you are wonderful you are creator and you are builder I thank you and I raise my eyes to you that because you called each of us please forgive me for any pride and disobedience of your will Thank you that you've blessed me beyond measure. The, all the times when I cried out to you, you've taken me out victor with victory. Thank you for the mercy that you've poured over me. I raise my eyes to you and I pray for this country, Lord, that went away from you, for the people who went away for, from you. Please have mercy on them and br bring them to prayer and to uh, change life starting with us lord help us see your wonderful works and rejoice amen
this day. Thank you for everything you gave us. Please help the people in Afghanistan and Ukraine, and please make their peace be between Russia and Afghan and Ukraine. And please keep us safe, at Father and Son, and thank you for the word you gave us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Dear God, thank you for everything you've given us. Please let me be humble and please let me stand in your path. And please let me be an example for everyone around me. Amen. 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 Dear God, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you bring us. Please help everybody that is sick. Please help us at Father and Son to be okay. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for saying that we could pray, Lord. I pray that you'll please forgive us for all those times that we had a proud attitude. I pray that you please clean my heart, Lord, and I pray that and all that I do, I do with a good attitude. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that I could be in your house. I pray for those who could not be here. Please bless them and help them. And I pray for those who will go to Father and Son tomorrow. Please protect us and give us strength and help me honor the elders that you placed in my life. Amen. Thank you that we got to come to church today. And um, um, please um, call me over the bomb more. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that... Thank you that we could come to church safely. And please help me to read the Bible every day. Please help me to stay on your path. Amen. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day that you've given us. Please help me be humble and to obey your word. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we got to come to church today. Um, please help me to cast all my anxiety on you. Amen. I praise you, Lord, and I thank you that through your mercy and your grace, I could be in your house with your children, and I bring my thanksgiving to you for all the blessings that you've given me. Thank you for your word, which is full of strength. Please help us be humble and repentant before you and to seek to fulfill your word. Amen. Dear God, thank you for everything you've given me and thank you that we could come to your house. Thank you that you are with us. Lord, please help me be humble and obedient to you. Amen. Dear God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for my brothers and sisters and the children who are present here. Please bless each of them, Lord, with salvation that only you can give. Please help our minds and our hearts to remain next to you. Lord, thank you that you've done a lot of good to us. Please cleanse us in your blood and help us walk on your path in humility and in holiness. Help us love you more and more. And may all glory and honor be to you. Amen. Lord, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here, Lord. I want to ask you, please help me be humble when uh, times of correction come upon me. Amen. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we got to go to church today. Please let me to be humble, and please let me to look up to my, to the people older than me. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the elders of the church. Thank you for the paths that they have created for us. And for each of us as parents, help us set straight paths for our children. Please find us faithful when you will come back. Please protect us from any spirit of pride. And we pray that you keep your work, your church, and the school. Please bless this weekend. And I pray for every family that will be gone, fathers and sons. Give them a blessed time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I praise you for your greatness and your glory. Thank you that you have given us this promise in your word that you will bring us to the end and that we could stand strong for your glory, please work in our lives, your holiness, and for your children, please have mercy on them and bl bless this time that we'll have with our sons. Help us create closer relationships and to pr praise you in everything. Amen.
Dear God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us. Please help me live a humble life and help me obe obey your plan for my life. And I pray for all those who are going to Father and Son to please be with them. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for your word and that you teach us to walk humbly before you. Please forgive us the, for the times, for the many times when we thought we were smart and we got proud. Lord, please cleanse our hearts and our minds and help us serve you with all of our hearts. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've brought me to this church, Lord. Please help me listen to your word and to fulfill it as you want me to. Please strengthen my heart, my mind, and may my actions be pleasing to you. Thank you for our parents who help us every day to hear your word, Lord. For all of these things, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's sing another congregational song. Învață-mă să făptuiesc re minor, învață-mă să făptuiesc o Doamne voia ta mereu. In the second part of our prayer time, first I want to ask if anyone has a special prayer request for Father and Son tomorrow that the Lord may protect us. I had this on my list as well. If there's anything else, if not for Father and Son, and we already prayed for this, and um, we also prayed for our country. Let's pray. Let's stand and pray for those who are sick. A uh, special request is we know that Brother Jonathan Han will go to serve our country on Monday. He will have. He will start a new season in his life. Let's pray for him and to entrust him in the Lord's hand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving that you've chosen us to be your children, that you've given Jesus Christ to die for our sins. Thank you that you've given us everlasting life. And we bring Jonathan before you. And we thank you that we know who we trust in. We trust in your power and we know that you will protect him. Please keep his faith strong and make him a light and an instrument in your hand. Please use him and bring yourself glory through his living. Anywhere he might be, may your name be praised. And 
may he be um, uh, testimony of your gospel through his words and deeds Amen dear Heavenly Father I thank you that in Christ I found comfort and peace thank you that you are our hope and our rest I entrust in your hand our parents who are um, elderly and especially my mother please give her full trust in your word and in your will for her life please give us wisdom and strength in all things I entrust Jonathan in your hand as well please protect him and keep your hand over him and we thank you that you protect your children who fear you and please help him fear you to do your will and to live a clean life before you no matter what he might go through we entrust everyone in your hand and we know that you listen to our prayers and protect us amen Heavenly Father, we praise your name for your word that encourages us to holiness. Give us this pleasing t state before you. That I also pray for Johnny to make him a live testimony and protect him. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the safe and safe for everything you gave us. Thank you that we could be here today. Please help me be humble and please help me live a life according to your will. Please help Johnny when he goes to the Marines to protect him in Jesus' pray. Amen. Amen. Dear God, I come with thanksgiving before you for all the blessings that you've poured over me. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your, guide, your guidance. I pray for Jonathan Han. Please be with him and don't let him go away f from you. Give him trust in your word. Strengthen him, strengthen his faith. Have mercy on him and protect him in all of this new road that he's taking in life. For those who are sick in the church, I want to pray for um, Sister Christina Murg's um, mother-in-law. Please um, heal her. And another prayer I have, Lord, is don't let this store... Um, be open here at the street corner may you make it a way that they won't be able to open I pray for all of these in Jesus name Amen please have mercy on all those that we love who are sick and suffering I pray that you would please be with them in their pain help them to feel that your presence is with them please remind them of the hope that they have because of Jesus Christ Amen Amen Dear Heavenly Father, I come to thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord, for the promises that we find in your word, promises on which we can stand. Thank you for the prom the example that you've given us, the way that you lived, and help us be obedient to your word. Lord, I pray for this camp, Father and Son, bless this time, and may your face be upon all of us there and all of the people here home. We thank you and we praise. Thank you. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the grace that you've given us to call ourselves your children. Thank you for salvation and for the fact that through your grace and your mercy you keep us day by day in obedience and submission to you. Through your grace you keep us in e each step we take on this earth, please help our eyes be pointed to you and our desire may it not be anything else but you and your will for us and with a heart to listen, with a open heart to listen to you and walk in obedience to you until the end. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, please help me live a life of holiness and to fulfill your will in my life. And I pray from all my heart, Lord, for Janina. Please strengthen her and her family. Lord, if it is your will, please give her health. And I thank you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for your... I thank you for your word and your goodness, especially tonight. I thank you for those who are elderly. Please protect them. I pray for the um, kids who will go to father and son. 
Johnny. Play, protect them and bring them back. And I pray for Johnny Han to protect him as he goes to the Marines to and to be with him. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time of grace that you've given us to gather here and to come with a request before you. We pray, Lord, that you cleanse us from any sin and anything that might sadden your face any evil, any pride, anything that I might have done to um, grieve you, please forgive me and um, please listen to all of our prayers and may you fulfill after your good and perfect will. I pray for all the those who are sick, for Sister Janina and for Sister Badragan. Lord, you know all those who are suffering in their bodies or those who are sick with cancer. Lord, please have mercy on them and give them healing. And we thank you, Lord, that you will answer in wonderful ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day and thank you that we are in your house. Please thank you for the peace that we have in this country and I pray that you be with those who are sick. Please help them find joy and their hope in you. And if you do your will, to bring them healing. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you as well. And I thank you that we have the opportunity to stand before your word. Please help us live it out in our lives. Lord, I come before you and I pray for Jonathan to protect him and keep him in his faith. I pray for all those who are in the army to please be with them and show them that you are their um, shield until the end. Amen. God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we could come to church and that we could come close to one another. Please be with those who are going to Father and Son. Bless them there. And please be with Johnny and the Marines. Give them boldness to do what is good. And I pray for Sister Jenny and Sister Badragan to heal them after your will. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And let's um, praise God with another congregational song. Pace de plină în Iisus găsim, în asul sânge când ne curățim. Pace de plină chiar și de urmă, credința în Iisus la mântuie. Pace de plină, noi în Iisus găsim.
câteva anunțuri doresc să fac. I want to make a few announcements and then Sister Ella will say a poem. After Sister Ella, we will sing another congregational song, time during which we will praise God with our gifts as well. There is no special announcements outside of the fact that tomorrow, tomorrow at 9 a.m., um, people will meet for father and son. Um, the Lord's Supper, Supper will be next, not this Sunday, next Sunday. And we have two newborns, Grace Dernescu and Olivia Goman. Let's thank God for these two children as well. Valea plângerii e locul curăției, florile acolo înfloresc, iarba e mai verde și mai vie, pietrele acolo strălucesc. Jos în vale vei găsi pășune, sus în munți sunt pietre, bolovani, apele în vale sunt mai bune și în vales mai puțin dușmani. Valea plângerii e lacrima fierbinte ce formează un râu de mângâieri. Doar acolo auzi șoaptele sfinte care îți dau cereștile puteri. Inima se spală doar în vale și trecutul se îngroapă adânc. Soarele mai luminos răsare, chiar și norii mai cu jale plâng. Tu acolo sufletul găsește pacea după care a tânjit. Valea plângerii, oricând primește pe drumețul trist și obosit. În această vale vezi mai bine cuiele ce în palmă i-au intrat și înțelegi ce preț a pus pe tine Domnul și de ce ai fost răscumpărat. Valea plângerii purifică argintul și din aur scoate ce în plus. Poți să cauți peste tot pământul. Vale ca aceasta, vale în lume, nos. Amin. După cântare și fratele Comunescu va vesti cuvântul. 1447, 1447, un singur dor mai am și eu, acela răslujim mereu, lui Dumnezeu cel bun și sfânt, cât voi trăi pe acest pământ. Un singur dor mai am și eu, acela de a sluji mereu, lui Dumnezeu cel bun și sfânt când voi trăi pe acest pământ, lui Dumnezeu cel bun și sfânt când voi trăi pe acest pământ, o Dumnezeu le ceresc, tu știi prea bine ce Pace. Dacă vreți să vă ridicați, If you can please stand with me. Revenim în această seară la capitolul 8 din cartea Daniel. We come back to uh, chapter 8 from the book of Daniel. Versete din capitolul 8. We will read the first two verses from chapter 8 and the first two verses. Daniel, capitolul 8, începem să citim. From chapter 11. 
In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, to me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. I saw in the vision, and it so happened while I was looking that I was in Shushan, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there, standing beside the river, was a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward, so that no animal could withstand him. Nor was there any that could deliver from his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Also in the first year of Darius and Mede, I, even I, stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings will arise in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than them all. By his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece. This is how much we're going to read tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we come with humility before you. We humble ourselves and we ask that you put your mercy over us tonight. Please bless your word. Lord, you speak and don't let our voices be heard. Please teach us, open our hearts and bless your congregation tonight. We thank you, we praise your holy name and we lay down at your feet. Amen. You may be seated. We will look at other texts from the scripture at the right time, but for now I would like to look at the first part of the prophecy. This vision is different from the first through which through the fact that this concentrates on two of the four kingdoms that were mentioned in chapter 7. I could say compared to chapter 7, chapter 8 is much easier to interpret until a point, of course, because we are not left in darkness when it comes to the signification the significance of the things that are described. The interpretation of the angel shows us the significance of the things that were seen. And for tonight, I would like us to look at this first symbol, the first vision that Daniel has. From the beginning, I would like to underline the fact that this whole scene that is described in chapter 8 is not a a static image. It's not a picture, but he can see the stages of this narration in his, in his dream. There are years and centuries that are going by fast before his eyes, and this ram looks like a lamb in the beginning. He grows, he starts growing horns, and now these two horns don't grow sim simultaneously as they would be normal, but they grow one at a time, and the one that grew later grows larger than the first. We see described these horns that are in three directions. The scene is very active, and Daniel as if he were standing before a screen, and um, the movie of history was playing. The verses 16 and 17 from the same chapter. Iată că înaintea mea stătea cineva care avea înfățișoarea unui om și am auzit un glas de om în mijlocul râului Ulai care a strigat. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. The angel brings the answers to the uh, questions that came to Daniel's mind and this is where the simple part is. He explains very clearly that this ram that he saw represents the king's of the Persians and the Medians. If you look at verse 20, the, the ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. 
The message is clear. The image of this first animal does not leave us looking for answers. There are many instances where we have to accept two or three options of interpretation because of the fact that we are missing information or proof, but at least in this case, the ram is the image of a kingdom that was to come. Daniel has this revelation in the third year of Belshazzar, who was the king of Babylon. To Daniel, Daniel knew both kingdoms. There were neighbors of Babylon at the time. Media or Persia was media was in on one side and Persia was in the northeast. The time when Daniel had this vision, Babylon was the strongest power in that area. And but there were things that were to happen that would change the situation as nobody anticipated it. The military power of Babylon, the strongholds and their expansion to the Mediterranean Sea when they uh, overtook Palestine. Who could have imagined that this power, this great power, would have been defeated by two small kingdoms and would disappear from the scene of history for centuries? The Medians, when the Medians are spread over many people, in Second Kings chapter 17, we are told this. But in 2 Kings 17, verses 4 to 6, then the king of Assyria invaded all the land and came to Samaria, and for three years he besieged it. In the ninth year of Hasha, the king of Assyria captured Samaria, and he carried the Israelites away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and on the harbor Habor and the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. We will find this in the fight of the Babylonians. Media with the Babylonians attack Assyria and they will be part of the empire of the Medes. If you want to put the PowerPoint up, you have a map of that illustrates the two empires, the Median Empire and the existent Empire of the Babyl of Bab Babylon. At the beginning of the 5th century, these were part of the Median Empire. For a short period of time, the two important empires, the Babylon and Media. This kingdom was one of the shortest ones, and it is very hard to explain why it did not last, considering the successes that they had. At a, sh a short time after these peak, in 55 before Christ, they, these two nations obtained their independence. And you can see the difference be between the size of Persia and Media at that time. Things don't stop here. The next year, in 552 before Christ, Cyrus starts the war of expansion against the, ter the territories controlled by the Medians. In 550, the capital is taken over and there is a new empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the ram with the two horns. They continue their expansion and they add um, more territory, which is today's Turkey. Seven years later, the inevitable happens. Cyrus 
provokes the only power that, that um, was going against them, Babylon. In 539 before Christ, Belshazzar is killed and Darius comes to the throne. And for the next 200 years, the Medo-Persian Empire will control the entire area. And the kings that we see mentioned in chapter 11, the four that are to come, will continue to add new territories to what they already had. They go to the north of Africa. And I would like to close the message tonight by trying to find an application to this history lesson. Apparently, we have to deal with the description of a few centuries before. And from a secular point of view, these are part of the natural order of things. These events confirm that people come and go, kingdoms come and go. Some are more important than others. And all these movements are, are attributed to human vices, going after supremacy, power, resources. People describe this in history as being modeled by circumstances. The right man at the right time is what we say. This interpretation is accepted by society. Should this be the answer to the troubles of the world? The Bible has something to say about this too, and it reflects in an absolute way on what God has to say. The temptation is great to forget that we have spiritual eyes and to let our five senses to form our opinions. The things that Daniel sees and that of course did not fit into the description of the things that he saw uh, amaze him. If we look at the things around us and we say that this was all, it's hard to find something that that amazes you. Daniel did not only assist at the fight between a ram and a goat. He saw things that probably scared him too, things that might have made him become sick and weak and not be able to fulfill his duties for a period of time. We see the destructive effects of evil a kingdom go against another. This power transfer was done without, with a lot of bloodshed. More than this, to Daniel has an open window to the unseen world, and what he sees there amplifies the living of Daniel. There's evil there as well. The spirits of evil fight for control. Gabriel mentions to Daniel in chapter 10 two of these, the Persian and Greek leadership. This is not new. People tried for many years to ask questions. The problem of evil cannot be placed in any other context but a religious one because if we go out of the religious context the context of faith e evil becomes an accident and it comes out of the autonomous nature there are things that we can't avoid but they are part of the natural order of things evil in this vision means bad luck this becomes a problem when you have to confront the existence of evil before God, a perfect God with absolute attributes. And part of these attributes provoke people in the world to raise a, f a series of questions that they are not ready to hear the answer for. We confront the effects of evil every day. Evil exists. And if evil exists, and it's evident that it does, this is what they say contradicts two attributes of God, his goodness and his, uh, his sovereignty. Because if he was good, he could not tolerate evil. But maybe he is good, but he can't stop it. Then he is not all-powerful.
Theologians, philosophers, and many others tried to come with a few solutions to this problem and to create an equilibrium. The first that I want to remind you of is an aesthetic solution. They say that evil is fragmented, that everything is good, but it has some parts that don't seem good at the first sight, but they absorb each other in a harmonious way. The problem with this interpretation is that you have to be patient to get to the end to see the whole. This is what the aesthetic solution says. You can't understand what happens with evil and good until you see the whole, but who can see the whole? Only God. We can perceive it in the limitation of space and time that we are in. What seems evil one day, if you interpret it in the historical point of view, it simplifies things. There is also... It's also hard to accept the promise that everything will be well and that it has an expl explanation, but with patience you will get to the point where you can see the whole picture. The question here is, how much evil does there have to be for a good ending? Another attempt to explain evil in people's lives is the didactic solution. Evil is good because it builds your character. Suffering brings to light compassion and love and other characteristics that are wanted. For someone said that for the for developing a good spiritual condition, the conditions have to be harsh. A good house or a good environment makes you fall asleep. Just in, in this case, in this explanation, there are questions that rise too. Do you really have to be beaten down to learn something? All who suffer, are they really in the advantage after? There's people who are destroyed by suffering. And the last solution that people try to bring is the um, free will one. We are beings who are created with free will. So there's the possibility to opt for evil and to choose wrong and then suffer the consequences. N next to all these things, I would like to close with a few verses from chapter 45 from Isaiah that talk about our text from chapter 8. And I'm convinced that it will bring the correct interpretation. Isaiah prophesied a hundred years before all of these, Isaiah 45, I will read a few verses from there. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I am the Lord, and there is no other, there is no God besides me. I will guard you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. The first observation is that God affirms without hesitation His sovereignty. I, I have decided this, and the purpose is good is well known. God can and does use solutions for the problems. Because he had to lead a people, in this case, he uses other people to fulfill his plan. The Hebrew people needed correction for their disobedience. This, I read from 2 Kings chapter 7, these, happened, these things happened because the children of Israel sinned before the Lord who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar is brought to Judah to 
punish the last people for the same sins. We see how God raises in a miraculous way in a short time another nation through which he will bring the salvation of the people. God is sovereign. Dumnezeu este atot puternic. God is all powerful. Este atot cunoscător. God is all knowing. Și Dumnezeu iubește. And God loves. Dumnezeu nu a creat universul. God did not create the universe to throw it somewhere in space and forget about it. We assist and wonder how God fulfills his plans. And he is chosen in a special way. Dumnezeu îl duce de mână. Cyprus is chosen in a special way by God to fulfill his plan. And in chapter 11, Gabriel tells Daniel that he was with the with King Darius. God is good, and he offers us the explanations for what happens. The problem of evil. Um, wrong choices are, have consequences, but more than anything, God is omniscient, full of love, all-powerful, but most especially, He remains sovereign. This was just a small part from the way that God worked in history, and for the fact that He gave us the grace to understand the way that He works, we have to be thankful to him. Nothing that happens today should surprise us. God has the same methods. He works in the same way. He helps and he saves the holy and the righteous, and he punishes the sinful. There's people who say that this is not a good or a righteous God, but our God will and always will be a righteous God full of love who will repay everyone according to their deeds. Let us stand. I want to ask Brother Benny to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, for the word that you've given us. Thank you that you lead history and you are good, you are righteous, you are all-powerful. Thank you that today you lead everything that is happening. We praise you for this and we trust in you that you bring all things to a good end. Amen. And the grace of Jesus Christ and his love may be with us. Amen.